Hi friends. Everyone will have their hour. Just keep that in mind. Have you ever been in a situation where uh, somebody's wrong, you hurt you, and you just want justice to be done? Or worse, you want vengeance to be done. You want that person to have their due. And it almost seems as if some of them get away with it. And that just irks us. It gets under our skin and, and we can really struggle with things like resentment. Or another scenario is, is that a person is, um, man, they're just, they're successful and they're getting everything that it looks like we'd want to get out of life, but they're really not paying any regard to God and they're just doing their own thing. And we're thinking to ourselves, hmm, something, something's missing here, right? I, I'm trying to do all the right things and this guy's getting ahead, but I'm not. Be careful how you evaluate those types of situations. Everybody has their hour. And we learn this from Scripture over and over again. Uh, everybody has their hour in the sense that they might have their moment of 15 minutes of fame. They might have their years of success. They might even have a lifetime of getting away with doing and living um, all kinds of bad things. But eventually, their hour will be up. Daniel. Daniel chapter 5 is a great place in Scripture just to kind of look at all this stuff. So the situation in Daniel chapter 5 is that you've got this Babylonian king, King Belshazzar. And he is not a good king. And he's not doing good things with the power that God has given to him. right? Because remember, God gives us life. Uh, and God gives us multiple opportunities to um, use the hour, so to speak, that he has given us. In this world, the time that he's given us in this world. And Belshazzar, far from it, is just using it all for his own gain. He gives this big banquet. There's like a thousand of his um, courtiers and most important people to him that are there. And what they're doing is that they're drinking from the sacred vessels that his father, King Nebuchadnezzar, stole when he came into Jerusalem and carried back all these precious sacred vessels. And now King Belshazzar is using them for profane purposes, um, you know, for orgies and for um, uh, sacrifices to not the one true God, but to false idols and gods that don't exist. In the midst of all this, um, a vision comes, which the king and everybody else sees. It's a hand that appears out of thin air and begins to write upon the wall. And the king and all of his guests freak out. So the king calls upon a visionary, who is Daniel, who um, helped King Nebuchadnezzar see his ways, uh, the errors of his ways, and now is trying to help Belshazzar in a similar way. And he says, listen, I'll interpret the dream for you, but I don't want um, your accolades, and I don't want the power and the position that you want to offer me if I interpret this dream. I'm just going to tell you plainly what this vision is. And so he does. And what he tells him is that, listen, the vision means, and the writing on the wall means that um, you have not been using well the hour that God has given you, the time that God has given you, the resources that God has given you. It's not about you. And um, your hour is about up, and you're going to lose your kingdom, and another kingdom is going to come along, the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians, and they're going to replace you. And then you're going to be gone, lost to history. In fact, we know from history that that's exactly what happens, right? He got his justice. He got his due. He went for it all in this world, and he got some of it, and for an extended period of time, but then his hour was up, and it was time to pay the piper. Listen, if that's your thinking, that is the wrong way to think about uh, injustices in this world and uh, life being unfair because guess what? Life is unfair and it is an unjust world. And we, because we live in that, even like our legal system, for instance, is not unjust. It's certainly um, immature. It's adolescent and it's not fully developed. It's not, it's not healthy, right? Because it's attached to too many things of this world. And it's losing its attachment to the natural law and the divine law. So, of course, even just on a legal 
uh, level, um, uh, people are going to get away with murder, literally, right? And there, likewise, there are going to be people in this world who um, they they just seem to be having success after success on the backs of other people, and sometimes they're on our own backs, and sometimes just they're in the place of our work, right? Well, hold on, just hold on. Because their hour will be up one day. Whether it's their 15 minutes of fame or their year of success or multiple years of success or even a lifetime of getting away with murder, their hour will be up in this world or worse in the world to come where they are not able to do anything about it because they've already made their choice with life. What we need to do for people like that is not hate them and despise them and allow them to cause inside of us all kinds of resentment and anger and, and, and then allow that to grow like a cancer inside of us so that what they're doing or not doing for, uh, to us is the stuff that causes us to lose life and happiness um, and to lose our ability to... Um, be in a relationship with God that is free and to be in this world in which, um, um, well, we lose perspective, right? Now, uh, I think w the way to look at this is through the eyes of Daniel. Here was Daniel. He was a slave in a foreign land who was serving now two kings, doing things that God had given him to do um, but he would much rather be back at home and among his people, his culture, his food, his language, and living a life free. But he used the resources of his time, of his life, of everything, of his faith in God, the way God had meant him to use it. Whereas these other two kings had not, and they had the world thrown at their feet and they lost it all, right? What does Jesus say in the Gospels? Um about um, what does it gain you, profit a man, to gain the whole world and lose his soul in the process. Right? Now, there's, there's another way for us, and that is that we will have our hour one day. <laughs> and that hour, if we're following God, will be an hour of glory, right? Where everything that we didn't get in this world, we'll get a billion fold over, you know? And every wrong that was done to us will be right again. But man, if we pursue those rights right now, you know, if um, uh, whether they're real, innate rights, or just all of these supposed rights that everybody says, I have a right to this, I have a right to this now, because everything supposedly is a right now, right? If you follow the trap, you follow the hole, you follow the rabbit hole, right? Because it's eating them up inside. Right? And they pursue everything now because they want their hour now. And we as Christians, and God would teach us this, this is not complex, have to be people who are patient with the hours that God has given us. And realize that the hours that God has given us are for us to get close to Him. And there's multiple ways to get, to get close to Him, including learning not to follow other people down the rabbit hole. And to use uh, our breath, our love, our, our strength, our intelligence, our, our work, um, our relationships, to use all of those for the, the glory of God and the good of others. And guess what? Along the way, then it becomes our good too. Because when we're, when we're working for others and they're good in, in God's glory, then we will, we will be blessed. We will have many moments in which God blesses us. And we're happy even... Even when we're in the midst of all kinds of uh, terrible storms around us, we'll be happy, we'll be secure, we'll be at peace, we'll be standing upon the rock, we'll have hope, we'll have perspective. And trust me, trust me, trust me. Because of the rock of Jesus Christ, because of the cross of Jesus Christ, because of Him taking on all of our injustices, right, including yours and I's, and all of our deprivations, including yours and, uh, and mine, uh, we will have our hour in heaven. And that hour will never be up again. We will have an endless 
lifetime together with God. Getting everything that we want, wanted in this world, but getting so much more. So be patient. Everybody has their hour.